Welcome to Speed Talk Live, which really isn't live, but a poorly produced podcast where we talk about NASCAR and all things racing. And occasionally, we have a special guest or two when we can get them to show up. Set down, strap in, hold on tight. Speed Talk Live is on the air. Welcome, everybody. It's a new week, and we're just coming out of CODA. I'm Greg Engel, here again with my associate editor, Owen Johnson. Hello, friend. How are you? Hey, Greg. I'm doing great. How about you? Good, good. So we got a lot to talk about this week. So we're coming out of CODA, Circuit of the Americas. William Byron won the race, led from pole, dominated the race. The only issue he had was coming up towards the end. Christopher Bell on fresher tires started to reel him in, started to catch him, ran out of time. And I we wondered after the race if Byron thought he had enough time to finish it out and how satisfying it was to make some micro mistakes at the end and yet still win the race. I mean, you say that and um, Rudy had the right strategy, I guess. <laughs> That's what I was thinking in the first stage. He, uh, he told me all week that the two stopper was going to be the, the way to go. So um, I know I think I, um, I, was, I didn't realize that at the end, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it was just trying to have, you know, not make mistakes. I feel like I made a lot of micro errors in the last 10 laps. And so I just got to, just got to calm down a little bit and just kind of, you know, look back at those 10 laps and think about what, what could I do better in the car to stay mentally locked in and not get flustered by the mirror or looking, you know, seeing him closing in a braking zone. So I just feel like there's, you know, things I can look back on to improve, but um, he definitely, you know, had fresher tires and I'm sure that helped a little bit, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's good, <laughs> but it's uh, it's why we try to work harder and improve. But uh, Christopher is really good. If it, it seems like when he gets a taste of you know the the win, and uh, at the end he's he's turns it up. So I knew that last lap he was going to be pushing hard. But uh, Rudy gave me an idea of how much gap I had, and I felt I kind of did the math in my head coming off turn one. I'm like, if I don't mess up, I think I'm going to be fine. Um, but but yeah, he was pushing hard. So Byron is the first repeat winner of 2024. And interestingly enough, it's the third year in a row he's done that. I don't know if you knew that, Owen. I didn't, but I mean, I've he's been incredibly dominant with his next-gen car. Hasn't been able to get a championship out of it, but he's won a whole lot of races, really come into form, and I, I do believe it. And, you know, he's he's kind of, um, he has started off each the last three years strong, but it's going to, you know, remains to be seen because I think he kind of, he kind of cools off when we get towards the playoffs. And you, and if you remember, he didn't, uh, the one year he was in contention and everybody thought he was going to win the truck series championship. I forget what year that was. Um, and he lost that. He went, didn't even make the truck series final four. So, um, or the final, he did, he missed one of the cutoffs. So we'll have to see if he can keep it up. Um, you know, he won six wins. He had six wins last year. Obviously, two wins now. Um, and 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 Byron said he is in a good place. I just feel like it reaffirms that the process that I'm doing during the week is is correct. So if I do those things that I know are right, and the people around me are are there to help me do those things and keep the ship kind of going, I know that that stuff works. So. Um, and I have a great team, you know, and I think that when I am able to plug into what we're doing as a whole and we're able to, Rudy and I are able to have conversations during the week and, and I get to a place where I feel confident, um, all that stuff clicks. So the sport's really hard. Um, it's very easy to get caught up in all the moving parts and all the different challenges, but I just know that if I, I do, I guess what, you know, is normal for me, I feel like it's, it's, um, it's good. So Hendrick won two of the last two of the, out of the three races this weekend with their first Xfinity win, thanks to an incredible last lap pass by Kyle Larson, who started in the back of the field and only led one lap. And that's the first time, I don't know if you knew this, Owen, but that's the first time that's ever happened. I did know that. he. I think the previous record was Richard Petty, but he led two laps because he started on the pole and then went to the back. 
Um, but in this case, Larson was sent to the back with a penalty for replacing some worn out brake rotors yep. and had to climb it, claw his way back through the field, ended up on the right strategy at the end of the race with fresh tires to chase down uh, Shane Van Gisbergen and Austin Hill and got the win. Yeah. And it was, uh, and of course, poor SVG was um, on the last lap was penalized for going out of, out of uh, track limits in the S's. And we're, we're going to talk about that in a minute. The one thing I wanted to wrap up from Coda in terms of Hendrick is William Byron, you know, Chase Elliott hasn't won and neither is Byron. And they, and they both were out with injuries and, and, and Elliott had a suspension and all that. It's, it seems to be like it's, it's been Byron and Larson. Um, and I think Elliot is going to to come back and form with us. So so I think is is William Byron. You know, he's had seven wins with. I Hendrick. think I think you mean Bowman. Or Bowman, yeah, that's who I, that's who I meant. Keep me honest, man. Keep me. Honest. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you're right. Bowman has had um, seven wins with Hendrick, but none since 2022 uh, when he won at Vegas. Of course, he missed five races near the end of the season due to concussion symptoms, and towards the end of the year came back, but. Then in April 2020, April 2023 last year, broke his back in a sprint car accident and missed three races. He's already said, uh, you know, he's he, he's going to curtail that activity. And then uh, mm -hmm. when he returned at Charlotte, um, he was fourth at Circuit of the Americas. Well, well, it, when he returned, the, he started the season with second place finish in the day, opening Daytona 500. And Sunday he was fourth at, at Coda, his second consecutive um consecutive top five finish despite his struggles hendrick motorsports still seems to be confident in alex bowman and this is what and i still gotta get used to this title the fact that jeff gordon is a vice president at hendrick motorsports this is what jeff gordon said about bowman after the sunday race oh and bowman yeah i mean you know when bowman gets on a roll and he gets his confidence up i mean there's no telling what what they're capable of doing so i'm really happy for them two top fives in a row um and and you know they they'd had a couple of rough weeks so they they needed this and uh hendrick motorsports is tough right i mean you're you're four of the top drivers and teams out there and there's a lot of pressure on you and and if you're winning then uh, there's there's pressure to continue when you're not you know winning or you're not um, you know, at the same level as your teammates, there's a ton of pressure, you know, that you got to get there. So I'm proud of him and Blake, the way that they've been working hard together to, to, to get some good finishes. And now I can't wait to see what they do next as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, Alex is one of those guys where the, the bigger the challenge, it seems like the, the, the better he does. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave here and try to find more ways to really challenge him even more <laughs> uh, you know but but uh you know, he you know he's a great race car driver and and it just you know just takes the whole combination to to get the the, the the i mean they didn't qualify well but they had a good car it seemed like all weekend and i think his confidence in the car uh especially once they dropped the green flag it it, it showed and, and blake called a good race and 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 owen uh alex bowman is not the only driver that's struggling in hendrick motorsports yeah, the other driver is struggling is Chase Elliott. He hasn't reached the top five, and I think it's 16 races. And that's probably, I mean, there's no indication that's going to stop after Richmond. He ran a reasonably well at Coda at stages, but he struggled since his surgery last season that took him out of the car. And he did not, he has not performed the last two seasons. And it almost feels to me like Hendrick is a tale of two teams. You have William Byron and Kyle Larson running up front, and then Alex Bowman and Elliott in good equipment, running reasonably well sometimes, but just not able to get the finishes that you'd expect out of Hendrick. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see as the season goes. I mean, it's, it's you know, we're, what, six races in. It's going to be interesting to see if, if Hendrick can, you know, kind of turn that around and get all four of its drivers up there because if they can do that, then, you know, it's going to be a Hendrick show all year long. And I think they've got the speed. I think they've got the balance. I know um, Elliot said somewhere that he's still trying to find the balance in the next-gen car. Um, and he doesn't have enough ex as much experience as the other guys, uh, you know, primarily due to missing races for the, because of the surgery and also because of, you know, his suspension. So I get it. Um, and, and hopefully he's going to catch up. We'll, we'll see that. I mean, he is the, you know, the, the sports most popular driver and, and uh, having 14th place finish at Coda is not going to cut it. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. So, 
let's let's talk about the other wrap up from coda we mentioned it svg got penalized on the final lap of the xfinity race uh, out of bounds and was and was what 30 seconds i think which is which is fair if you're going to do that. It, I hated to see that because SVG had a fantastic day. I was, you know, I I personally, um, and now I don't cheer for drivers, okay? I cheer for stories. And SVG winning another uh, race and in, 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 in would, would definitely be a great story. So I was kind of cheering for that story. Uh, and, you know, but but with the, the penalty and, of course, Larson, his last lap, uh, you know, powered past, um, that kind of put the kibosh on that but there was some there were some issues talking because i think it was on sunday and you can keep me honest as you do when i mix up alex bowman and <laughs> and william byron um there was I, I think it was larson got penalized on sunday for going on track limits in the s's and people were screaming that he was kind of forced out it wasn't something that was intentional but yet NASCAR penalized him and he had to do a pass through because it was during the race. It wasn't at the end of the race. So he had to do a pass through and fought back from that and, and finished reasonably well. But um, if, if I remember right, that's who that was. It was Larson who got, who got shortcutted those S's because he got pushed over to the side this week. NASCAR talked about, so they're going to look at that rule uh, because and 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 I think they they kind of have some egg on their faces, so to speak, only because um, it it kind of makes them look bad. Because really, I, I don't. Larson was was forced down there. It wasn't his fault. He didn't do it intentionally. He didn't gain a speed advantage. He got forced down there in the S's, uh, you know, outside of track limits, and and he got penalized for it. So NASCAR is going to look at that, um, and and going forward. Overall, um, what was your impression of the Coda races, both the, all three of the truck, the Xfinity, and, and the Cup race? Well, just to wrap up some of the track limits discussion, the big problem NASCAR has, I think, is that it's a rented facility. It's not a facility they own or through Speedway Motorsports. So they're ending up relying on the same technology that Coda has. And in this case, it's the tech they run for Formula One, which is automated. And they're very proud of that technology, but it doesn't give any leeway to a driver forced off, for instance, as we saw. Um, but I think that's just that's a problem inherent in renting a track. Um, overall, I thought it was I thought it put on good racing. I thought it put on better racing than I think we saw last year. Last year came down to a lot of chaos. This year it was actually a good good race strategy played into it. Uh, pit, pitting ended up determining who won the race, which is always always good to put it in the crew chief's hands a bit and see some variability. So I, I thought overall it was a good race, solid for Coda. Yeah, it was it was a you know it was a high speed chess mass I, match I think. Um, Byron pitted before each of the stages, so he really didn't get that many stage points. Um, but that that ultimately won in the race, and uh, I mm -hmm. thought that was cool. And then and then Bell putting on the tires later than anybody else and make that last you know last few laps run almost pulled it off. Um, that would have been cool to see, but I thought it was a good race. Um, and, and I thought, like I said, it was a high speed chess match and, and, uh, you know, whoever had the better, um, the, the better strategy won. And in this case it was Byron, um, but bell man almost pulled it off. Um, and one last note about the, uh, the, the coda, uh, the bizarre sight of Marco Andretti losing his mm -hmm. rear axle assembly. Um, I've never seen in all my life in all the years I've been around racing, I've never seen an entire rear axle come off and go rolling across the track like that. Um, and of course, you know, good thing he was okay, but uh, there were no penalties for that. Penalty sheet came out this week. There were a couple of loose lug nuts, but there was no penalty for losing your entire rear axle. <laughs> so I'm assuming it was something that uh, NASCAR determined uh, wasn't the team's fault, but I'm surprised just it doesn't fit in the loose wheel, the loose wheel category. You get a penalty for that. I think, I, I don't you know, know. What, I don't know when what it happened, I saw on social media that day when it happened, I saw people saying, oh, do you, do you suspend them for four weeks instead <laughs> of two? You know, um, so we'll see. But, you know, I felt bad because Marco Andretti is a great driver. Obviously, great yeah. family comes from. So I wanted to see him do well. And that would have been another good story. But, you know, we'll see um, going forward how, how much, how, 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 you know, he improves and the, and the trucks, you know, 
I almost think that I, I thought this, you know, because you were talking about the rented track, and I didn't know that, which is why you're the smarter of the two. Um, and or I just didn't think of that. Um, I'm almost thinking, I mean, it's cool to see the trucks race there, it's cool to see Xfinity race there. They were both good races, but I almost like to would like to see that used as an opportunity to um to pull away or to uh, maybe take the trucks and Xfinity series to different places and try different things, um, you know, uh, different tracks maybe, and keep the, uh, keep coded just for, for cup. I think that would be a lot more interesting to see than, than having the, the trucks and Xfinity, but you know, that's just me and, and that's well, the only thing they want to do. It's the only road course for trucks this year, which yeah, I, I think is interesting that. because yeah, I know. I, I think it, Canadian Tire, for instance, is one of their better races. And I, I don't know why they took that one away in favor of Coda, which is always, it's a good race, but it's not, I don't think it's the best road course for the trucks. Maybe we could, you know, maybe they should investigate different road courses to take the trucks. That would be cool. That would be cool. Mm. You know, but we'll see. And you're right. I, I did, I forgot to mention that that was the only, this is the only road course for trucks, which is good or bad. I don't know. Um, but we'll see. All right. Are you little maggots? You make me want to vomit. All right. This week's rants, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'm going to let it lead off with Owen because Owen is, you've got that English sensibility where you're kind of calm, but this, this weekend you got a kind of little, uh, little rant going on. So I want to turn the rants over to you to get started. All right. Well, I think we got to start this rant just talking about Connor Zillish. And just before we talk about him, just wrap up his weekend. I got to read this to make sure I don't miss anything. He started for the truck series, his first ever NASCAR national race, started on the pole, missed the first turn, goes a lap down for repairs, gets spun after getting the free pass, then gets a pass through for corner cutting in the one part of the track where they actually enforce it, gets a tire rub, gets another pass through, and still ends up fourth. Then he gets a post, his crew chief gets a post-race penalty for a loose lug nut. So what a welcome to the sport for Connor Zillish. And, and I got one up, I, I want to hear. I got one up on you. I got, you got me earlier with the, with the track <laughs> rental. Connor, he's, he qualified on the pole, um, but it was a track record. What a debut. Mm -hmm. What a debut this young kid for his first NASCAR National Series race. All that and, and more and finish fourth. Yeah, and if there's one guy, one guy I want to hear after the race, I want to hear his thoughts on as he heads out right to another ARCA race. But instead, we get no quotes from Zillish. We get two TV interviews, and then we cut to race day on FS1 for the Xfinity Series race. So I get it. It's a the race had a red flag in overtime, so it definitely went into the next next programming. But the next programming was NASCAR coverage. I'd rather hear from some of the drivers in the race than hear another voiceover about what we might expect in the next race. And Connor Zillish specifically, he had to run to a plane in this case, sure. But it doesn't need to be him. It could be more drivers than just first and second instead of just more NASCAR coverage. So I was a bit disappointed by that after the truck series. And, you know, that's that's a common that's a common gripe for me, too, because we can't get to every race, both financially and with everything else we got going on. So we sometimes depend on uh, getting quotes from the manufacturers um, and we you know, we don't normally take them from, you know, somebody on social media, but people get. You know, there's people there, and even when you're there, you'll be in the press box because you're going to watch the whole race. You can't make it down to um, pit road post race and get all the quotes. Um, so we sometimes depend on the manufacturers, and um, in the trucks and Xfinity series, Toyota and Ford will usually provide quotes. Chevy doesn't, um, mm -hmm. and and to be honest, Ford doesn't always do that either. But the, that's the other thing that irritates me is the fact that when you do get quotes, if you're a driver, if you're a Toyota driver and you crash out of the race or you lose and you end up, you know, fifth and you were leading at the last lap or something, that's still a story. We still would like to get a quote from that. And I know you don't want to be putting your driver in a bad light, but it's it's, you know, we need to have that because that's the whole story and people want to know that. Um, and I and and I know that when you talk about like uh, sponsors, for example, um, you talk about sponsors and and they want to be put in a good light, but the at the end of the day, if, as long as their brand is getting exposure, right? Any any media is good media um, for for sponsors and 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 brands. So I think that you know I wish they would do that, and uh, yeah, so you know we've. We, I, 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 you know, I, I don't want to 
def default the fact that there's a lot of guys that can't afford to go to track to go to every race. Um, it's not like it was before when I started in the sport writing for the sporting news. Uh, I went to every race. I had a travel agent who was exclusive to to us and the traveling crew, and they would set you know they would set up our plane flights and our hotels and. Uh, my editor would call me and say, uh, I noticed you didn't, you didn't uh, expense your dinner Saturday night. Did you not eat? Are you okay? You know, I mean, those were the kind of days we don't have those anymore. There's very few full-time people. We all have to have lives and, and ways to make a living outside of this sport. So we can't get to every race, but we still want to cover it as best we can. Right. And yeah, we can get quotes off TV, but we depend on those manufacturers to get us quotes good, bad, or indifferent. Um, and, and, and we we get a lot of access, right? NASCAR gives us remote access to the, the timing and scoring. Um, we have a lot of good access and it's fantastic. It's good to have. But the manufacturers, especially in the NASCAR Xfinity and Truck Series, uh, man, I wish you guys would step up to the plate and, and get us some quotes and we'll get you some more coverage. And I think your brand will be better off for it and they'll be happy that at least they're being mentioned. Um, not just when they're when they're winning. So, yeah, Connor Zillich was a bigger story than we could have reported on this weekend. Um, instead, he got uh, what a, a paragraph, a blurb. He got a couple of paragraphs after that absolutely crazy race. But I know, I mean, I saw some interviews on social media, some people who were able to follow him out to the plane. But I guess no Chevy representatives were able to. So that's how it goes. But I'd like I'd like to see it. I I find myself when I'm at the racetrack, which will be in a couple of weeks in Martinsville, running yes. around just trying to get to get to every driver, just because I know I'm not going to be able to rely on some of these sheets. So. Yeah, and that's the other thing. We can't get to every driver, even if we are at the track. You know, mm -hmm. if there's if there's three or four stories, you're only going to get one. You're not going to get all three or four because you've got to run up and down uh, pit lane. So, yeah, we need some help, manufacturers, and and uh, I'm hoping they'll step up to the plate. But you know what? Another thing that you mentioned. Um, because I just say SVG. You're one of the few guys that can actually say the name right. Um, and the broadcast <laughs> this week uh, was was kind of a was kind of a crap show when it came to trying to pronounce this poor guy's name. Absolutely, and I thought we established this after Chicago, but mispronunciation of Shane Van Gisbergen over the over this weekend, and it wasn't just him in the Xfinity race. I think Daniel Kvyat was running. And some of the pronunciation I heard for both of those names were incredibly interesting. But I think that's, it just comes down to it. If you're a broadcaster, that is ultimately, that's preparation. I have to, when I'm writing these stories, I have to spell the names correctly. I have to get their racing record correct. And I get making mistakes, but especially for Shane Van Gisbergen, we established this after Chicago, pronunciation was such a big deal. We're going to keep having foreign drivers. We have to make sure we're pronouncing their names correctly. Yep. <laughs> and that's why I should stick with SVG. Um <laughs> And you know what makes it worse to me is I've got to to talk to him a couple times and he is just such a nice, swell, down to earth guy that, mm -hmm. you know, I feel bad when I actually do have to say his name uh, and, and mispronounce it. You know, I feel bad, which is why I just say SVG because everybody knows it. Um, but that makes me feel bad too. So yeah, we're going to have, we're going to keep, like you said, we're going to keep having foreign drivers. So we've got to step up to the plate. Doesn't mean we have to learn to speak French or German, but, uh, or Japanese, <laughs> Because uh, Kamui Kobayashi, I said that right, uh, was at Coda, <laughs> and uh, that poor guy, I, I really like that guy. I've interviewed him a couple times, and uh, he he had a day from heck. I mean, he was knocked out by uh, by uh, uh, Stenhouse. Thank you, Rick Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And I they think got a was, history now. He got knocked yeah. out by him at uh, Indy. <laughs> yes, yeah, and you pointed that out. Um, I remember you yeah you pointed that out so uh, and then i remembered that so poor poor kamui uh great world-class driver who just had a day to forget uh <laughs> on sunday <laughs> and uh hopefully we can lure him back i think he's gonna race at the indianapolis road course i hope I so he's i mean he's an incredible driver he's got the uh the the record for the fastest lap around the um circuit de la sarthe where they hold the le mans 24 hours so he, he yeah. is definitely a really fast world-class racing driver on the podium in formula one but he just I think the aggression in, in NASCAR sometimes surprises him. Yeah, and 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 we're obviously better, or at least I am, better at pronouncing his name. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> All right. Another thing we've got to look at. The, uh, there was only one Ford that finished in the top 10 on Sunday. Uh, that was Chris Boucher. Uh, Fords, 
I want to think, are they struggling or are they not? Um, they were competitive, like you said, Owen. Um, they were competitive on the one pile, the 1.5 mile tracks we've been to, but the, it seems like they're still they're still kind of lacking. So earlier today, I got to talk to Chris Boucher, and and I asked him, is it the execution or is it something else? Um, the one variable you've got coming to Richmond, yeah, you did great there last year, and and you you had a strong performance. The only variable this year actually uh, is obviously the new Ford Dark Horse Mustang, um, and and we've been playing it up in, in in the media that you know Ford hasn't won a race. Oh my God, the sky is falling. Um, is it? And you kind of touched on this. Is it more not necessarily a problem with the body style, the new body style? Could it be more of the the execution side of it and the fact that you're not getting the pit stops and you're not getting the qualifying. Is that why we're not seeing a Ford in victory lane? Because, you know, a lot of us kind of looked at the fact that you were the only four in the top 10 last week at Coda to, to kind of, kind of scratch our heads. So do you think it's execution or you think there's actually some issues with the body that still need to be worked out? If, um, if it was just us or, or just our organization that we were talking about, uh, I would say then, Maybe you would bring it down to execution, but um, when we have the numbers that we do, uh, I'd, I'd say it's probably hard to put a blanket over all of us and say that the execution hasn't been there with a single one. Um, I don't know. It's it's something that um, you, you also have the new underbody or the short track package with it. Uh, so, you know, what we did have as a baseline, it wasn't simple to just uh, to, to change it over. Um, we're not the only ones going through it though, right? Um, you know, the, the Toyota camp had the same, uh, same thing in front of them. So we are working through it and trying to figure out what exactly it is. Um, I can't speak for everybody, but we certainly have in our camp, we have some, some execution stuff that we need to clean up, um, need to make some better decisions at, at the right times from behind the wheel and, uh, and put ourselves in a better spot need to qualify better um certainly that's that's been a big hit um and uh and, and need a little bit of luck on our side and, and that's from from here inside the rfk building that's i think that's where our head's at i don't think that we're we're saying that we're way behind and we need these big changes um i think we're we're in a, a little bit of a learning spot we're probably deep enough into the season now to where uh, we certainly need to be coming up with uh, solutions to to what it is that we need to to be learning, to, to be better, to be closer to winning. And and we've had some solid – we've been in the top ten quite a lot. Uh, you know, so we've been close, uh, but we haven't closed the deal. And um, and don't feel like that ultimately we've been in the running to, to really close the deal. Uh, as strong as Phoenix was for us, uh, the, the 20 was lights out. You know, so um, still got still got work to do. And, uh, and if we're going to win races um, – you know, a day like – I'll go back to these. But day like that when you feel like you – man, we passed a lot of cars. We did really good. and uh, But there was still one that, <laughs> that you just weren't close to. That's – um that, that that one challenges you a little bit more. Uh, when, when you're sitting there and say, man, there were there were 15 cars better than us. Uh, man, we, we, we know we got, got some work to do, a lot of ways to improve. But uh, when one, one car finds a way, one team finds a way, that uh, puts everybody else on notice. So that's where we're at. Um, don't panic yet. Don't panic yet. We got a couple of good tracks coming at us still, and uh, and we are excited about what the next uh, four to five weeks will hold for us. Um, need some cleanup. Have you noticed more engagement from Ford since they're they're winless? Uh, that's no, n not from uh, from where I'm sitting right now. Um, you know, maybe that's uh, probably for for higher tables than uh, than mine, but um, you know, for me. It's uh, it's been a lot of business as usual. Uh, you know, we see all, all of our Ford folks at the track, and uh, you know, we're excited to to run in these races and figure out how to how to make them wins. Uh, and, and again, you know, the speed has been there at a lot of times, uh, not all the time, but we we just we got some learning to do still. And uh, and and I'm sure the right right areas are getting getting more attention to where we can uh, discover it together. Um, it's just probably in different rooms than, than where I'm at. So what's your take on that, Owen? Do you think, do you think the Fords are, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a problem with the new, with the new body or is it just execution on their part on individual teams? What do you think? 
I think that it has to be something with the new body. The cars are just not competitive outside of Ryan Blaney a couple times on the short tracks and the road courses. We I, Like I said, the mile and a half that we went to, they, there were total parity of the top six. Uh, one, two, three, and four, five, six were all different manufacturers, which is good. That's what we want to see. And those will be the majority of the season once we get into it. But so far, we've just been to short tracks, road courses. They were fast in the Daytona 500. So I don't think that necessarily works because they didn't, ended up getting wrecked out but the short tracks and the road courses we just haven't seen anything from it and i it seems to me that since all the cars there are involved it's got to be a ford problem yep so you know we're six races in um Chris, you know boucher was is very motivated heading to richmond and and we'll have to see i you know i don't think it's pushing any panic buttons at least not publicly um mm -hmm. so we'll have to wait and see you know something else that's interesting that came up this weekend um north wilkesboro speedway uh, and, and they're going to have the, the all-star race there again this year. I can't wait. I'll be there. I'm looking forward to it. There's always been this legend about, uh, there was a cave somewhere on the property that they used to hide moonshine, a moonshine still in, um, and people from junior Johnson to some of the locals used to talk about, yep, it was here. Um, and it was, it was a big legend. And for anybody that doesn't know, obviously moonshining was a big, big part of NASCAR's early years. Um, and Wilkes County is known as the moonshine capital of america um then and now but over the last week they're getting ready for the the all-star race and they were working on part of the grandstands and found a hole under the grandstands containing a cave and it has some brick walls um and they haven't dug down into it to find if there's a still or not but uh i remember when junior johnson and he passed away in 2019, which is a shame. I wish he would have been there to see North Wilkesboro be reborn uh, because he, you know, he was, he's from there and raced there a lot. And, and it was, you know, he, he was synonymous with that track, but anyway, uh, and he was also a bootlegger. His dad was a bootlegger. Um, Junior spent a, a year in jail, but not for getting caught running moonshine. Uh, it was for, because he had an illegal still, but he was one of the ones that used to say, yeah, there's, there's a, there's a, a cave on this property and, and nobody ever found it. So maybe they found it. We'll have to see how that, how that plays out, but we've got the all-star race in a couple months. I'll be there. Um, and, and I'll see, and maybe they'll find it by then. And maybe that'll be the new media center. <laughs> they'll turn that cave because right now they have a little bitty trailer and they shove us all in a trailer, which is fine. I'm, I'm glad, but maybe, you know, maybe they'll put us in the cave in the old moonshiners cave. Um, or they can open it up to hospitality or something. I don't know. One note on North Wilkesboro that I love. I mean, there's nothing I don't love about North Wilkesboro. Their press box there is not really a press box. It stands coming in to turn three where they cover it with a, like, a, like, a, 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 like, I want to say a tent, but it's not really a tent. It's like one of those awnings. Um, and they set up tables and they have, they have some some monitors and they have internet access and but you are outside and the first time when i first heard that i thought what in the hell is this um you know maybe because i'm just a spoiled brat and i'm used to the you know the press box at like daytona which is the best press box in the history of press boxes but don't get me started but there at north wilkesboro that outdoor press box is simply freaking amazing well i think I you mean, just gotta love north wilkesboro and I, I just the touches like that that take you back to the history of our sport and it's somewhere i ho hope i can get to so one of these days we'll see what happens this year but it is i think they did a really great job with it i think it's a years-long effort to get it open and i'm so glad it did because it really it takes me back to a part of the sport that i never got to see and you know sitting there in that press box feeling hearing the cars go by feeling the roar of the fans and, and everything that goes on. It is amazing. Oh, golly. <laughs> All right, let's wrap up some notes. There's a report that NASCAR is looking at taking over part of Long Beach for a Long Beach uh, race, which would replace the LA Coliseum, the, the for the clash the contract ran out on that so there's now talk about going long beach which is not that far away um uh, indycar of course is up in arms about it they're not happy about it because it's their 
purview. What the long the Long Beach Grand Prix is one of the most popular uh, stops on the Indy Car Circuit, uh, besides the you know Indianapolis Five Hundred. And now, so it looks like I don't know. Will we see a uh, NASCAR race at Long Beach? I mean that. Uh, remains to be seen but uh you know we'll see and speaking of california and you brought this up and you reminded me indycar was at thermal which is in palm springs um i wasn't impressed <laughs> I, I was excited mm -hmm. because that's one of the few tracks um the thermal track i've actually driven on i was out there for a bmw uh, high performance driving school a couple years ago years ago doing a story for auto week and drove on that track. It's a beautiful facility. Um, and I know I had fun uh, whipping an IMSA uh, LMP or a, uh, you know, a IMSA, IMSA car, IMSA BMW car around that track and had a ball. But I mean, it just, just to me, I didn't like the vibe and, uh, and, and, and anything about it. So we'll see. Yeah. I don't think we'll go to. I, I don't know if they're going to have it back. It, it it was not very popular. I think the big problem was they marketed it as an all-star race, and then it ended up feeling more like an exclusive test session, which, I mean, fair enough. If that's what IndyCar wants, I'm sure you're going to attract some sponsors out of it. It's it's a private members club with plenty of people who are, who probably have the net worth to sponsor an IndyCar. So maybe IndyCar will come out with the, to the good for it, but it just it did not feel anything like an all-star race. The drivers didn't feel like they were willing to push their cars that hard. Why would they? And it, the the racing on that track just didn't end up being being particularly good. So not not a great not a great show for IndyCar. All right, let's wrap it up. We're going to we're going to review Richmond as I rip my ear off. Um, and and so we got Richmond coming up this week. Uh, and like you said, the the your back to the short track package we saw at Phoenix. Yeah, so maybe don't expect what we saw at, at Bristol, which was the intermediate package. Obviously, a lot of tire wear there. That's dependent on Goodyear. But the, it's not going to be the same package that we saw at Bristol. Um, last time we went to the action track, Richmond, it turned into a fuel mileage track. So it's going to be, I would expect more of the same when we come with the next gen this time. So who's your pick? My pick has to be 2311. The Toyotas have been really fast. And last time we went to Richmond, both the 2311 cars were running first and second in the beginning uh, Redick won the first stage, Wallace was runner-up in the second stage. I think of the two of them, it's probably more likely Redick, but I think both of those two cars have a shot. Well, I respect your picks. I'm actually going to go with Chris Boucher. Um, mm -hmm. After talking to him, I think he's got the confidence. I think he's got the motivation. Um, and I think this could be Ford's weekend to to shut up all of the critics who are wondering about, about what Ford's doing. So that's my pick. Um, Defending and... winner, so he knows how to do it. There you go. That's right. We know he knows how to do it. Speaking of winners, uh, in the few minutes we've got left, you are going to be heading back stateside. You're in London right now. You'll be back towards the end of the week. Um, you won't be at the Richmond race. However, you're going to your first race at Martinsville next week. <laughs> I'm really excited. It, I, another historic track, just like we talked about with North Folksboro. I'm going to try a hot dog, I've been told. A lot of NASCAR history yes. in that hot dog, so... You'll be having you'll, you, you, you'll owe us a feature story on the on the Martinsville hot dog. And my mom, by the way, lives about 40 minutes from that track. So that's where I usually stay. But I'm not going to I'm not going to wish that upon you because I love my mom. She's 84 <laughs> years old. But the only problem is when I go to her house um, and if I were to say, you know, you can go down to my mom's house, which is just over the border in North Carolina, um, she would she'd work you to death. Um, you'd be out <laughs> fixing the fence. You'd be taking out the trash. You'd be fixing. Oh, this this the sink is clogged up you know and the, the the dog needs their nails trimmed and you know so anyway so let me deal with that and uh maybe one time we'll, if we're there together we'll go to my mom's house and have dinner or something but <laughs> but we'll see well, i'll but, look forward to that <laughs> yeah there you go so we'll be looking forward to talking to owen stateside next week and we'll be looking forward to talking about richmond and talking about owen johnson getting ready to go to Martinsville, a track I love, a track I'll be at in the fall. And we will look forward to talking to you all next week. Oh, and thank you, my friend. Safe travels. Thank you. See you back stateside. All right, there you go. We'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like and subscribe. We will talk to you next week. See ya.
Thanks for listening to Speed Talk Live. For questions or just to tell us how bad our production is or to leave other feedback, leave us a comment below. For all the latest NASCAR news, visit www.cupscene.com. Until next time, peace out and let's go racing.